Hi, I'm Pinky Daga. I'm CEO for Thrive Art and Soul. I'm here in conversation with Adam Apollo. Uh, he's here from America, and we are here to share his lovely story of awakening. Um, just so that you know, we've been here at Pyramid Valley at the GFSS for the past few days, and we've been having amazing conversations with Adam. Uh, it's just been enlightening to even just hear the snippets of the stories that you've told me, Adam. So first of all, welcome Thank you, to Pyramid, Thank you. yes, to GFSS and to the Pyramid Valley. And uh, it's just been amazing. I just love your energy. I just love how you are always at this vibration of um, love and empathy and also just as if you're in uh, in the deeper mysteries of the world like you know you're you're just so mysterious adam tell me <laughs> tell me what is the secret behind that mystery i want to know uh well we are suffused in the mystery always yes and um the journey of growth and of becoming who we are requires at different stages to claim strongly, I am this, this is who I am. And then life shows us that that's not all that we are. Yes. And we have to surrender again. Right. We have to burn down to the ash. And then evolve to, to the, the dust, next level. And experience the mystery in its fullness. Yes. And my life has been punctuated by major cycles of death and change and transformation. And through that, I've come to surrender a lot more. So tell us a few of those moments in your life. How did this journey be begin? What happened? What were those moments, those transformative moments? I would love to know. Yeah, growing up, I experienced a lot of rapid change. Yeah. Um, my parents, I was born in Oakland, California. My parents traveled a lot until I was about two years old, and then they divorced. And I went between northern New Mexico, a little tiny town at 9,000 9, feet called Red River, and Austin, Texas. And in the journey between the two places, I got to know sort of very different cultures and very mm -hmm. different energies. Um, and I went through a series of sort of cycles of change and pain and growth. Um, I had some challenges with my stepfather, who my mom remarried. And came into a place of really trying to redefine and re-explore myself every chance that I had. Um, and this happened through my parents moving several mm -hmm. times. Uh, and when I was uh, 11, um, I came to India for the first time. And uh, after having some potent experiences at the Mayor Baba Retreat Center called Marazad, north of Amagnagar, which my family's been connected to, Mayor Baba and those families for a long time. Um, I traveled back home 36 hours straight and arrived finding out that my stepmother had just died in a car accident. Oh. And my stepbrother was driving the car and his fiance was also in the car and also died in the car accident. And this um, sort of shattered my father, shattered my stepbrothers, and my whole reality underwent a huge rift and I began to question everything. I began to question truth and God and life and there was nothing that I was told up until that point that I felt like I could really rest in mm. as this is the truth. Right. Um, and so I became a scientist sort of investigating my reality uh -huh. until the time I was about 15 and when I was 15 I had a dear Chilean friend Christopher Oriana and he and I were exploring questions like how is it that you feel it when somebody's looking at you. Right. You know, at 15. Yeah. And, and why is it that you think of somebody and they call you on the phone? Right. Right. And how do these things happen? And, and these strange martial arts stories of right. you know, fantastic, you know, movements, extraordinary, yeah. extraordinary movements and yeah. extraordinary abilities. Um, and we began to do these different experiments. Uh, and these experiments led to uh, me discovering that I had a human energy field around my body and that this field is fluid, it's tactile, you can feel it physically, you can send it across a room, you can pick it up from other people, and suddenly all the gaps, all the lies, all the stuff that I've been questioning for all these mm -hmm. years, uh, all of it, all the puzzle pieces was right into place. 
And, I and this realized, was all self-discovery. Yeah, and I realized, you know, what a vibe is. And, and I thought that I discovered the Force, you know? It was like Star Wars moment, you know? Luke Skywalker's like, holy cow, what is this? And, and the uh, Force is within us. That's right, and I began playing with the Force and mm -hmm. exploring the elements in it, and it put me through an initiation series. And right. it wasn't, you know, it was over the next few years that I discovered that, my God, there's some things called chi out there, you know, from Chinese philosophy, and then there's ki in Japanese philosophy, and prana in Indian philosophy, and vital force, and I started to realize that I wasn't the only person that had discovered this, okay. and that this was actually part of an ancient lineage of different traditions around the planet that had gotten lost somewhere. Right. And that really set me on the path of my scientific and metaphysical explorations. Wow. And uh, you were telling me earlier that a lot of your explorations and your path led to many indigenous tribes mm -hmm. and interactions with them. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about it. It was, uh, uh, that was a fascinating uh, story that you told me. Working with different indigenous elders and youth mm -hmm. uh, was both a very challenging journey yeah. um, and exquisitely beautiful uh, at the same time. Right. I was, I had been invited to go and help cook for a group of elders right. up in the mountains in North Carolina. Uh -huh. um, and this that, guy, and that was just sheer coincidence. I ran into a guy at the uh -huh. grocery store. Uh -huh. This guy recognizes me from five years before. Right. He knows my grandparents wow. and he was connected to the Mayor Baba community. Interesting thread again. Right. And he's like, I'm going up to this place called Heavenly Mountain in Boone, and you should come with me. There's all these indigenous elders, and I'm cooking a bunch of food. You can come and cook and be in the fire. I'm like, okay, cool. So I go, mm -hmm. and the first night I'm sitting in council with like a hundred, over a hundred different elders from all over the world wow. who have gathered here at this place. And I'm from many different people. tribes. Yeah, from many different tribes. Wow. All over North America, all over the world, you know. Um, Hawaiian elders and yeah. Japanese elders and you know and so I, I'm the only young person and it's my turn to stand up and say why I'm there and so I stand up and I say I'm Adam Apollo and I'm here to represent the youth of all tribes who are not represented in this circle. And what made you say that? I don't know. I just, <laughs> just came out of, I was like this is what I'm supposed to do and they helped me to it. I uh, had to do every fire ceremony, every sweat lodge, I had to you know, do the work with them. And I smoked and a white buffalo peace pipe with Orville Looking Horse, became friends with his family, um, was given like a whale bone hook by the Pu'anua Keke Kanahele, chief of the Hawaiian sovereign nation. And when you were going through that, did you have any echoes of your past life? So I absolutely did. Yeah. Um, and it got, I, I'd already been uh, sort of deeply exploring my lifetimes in the years leading up before this. Mm -hmm. I had uh, spontaneously encountered a few different people who we had simultaneous recall experiences with oh, each other. Oh, wow. And I, you know, that's a, no, a whole other story. <laughs> um, but let's just say I scientifically doubted it for as long as I could right. until it was proven beyond a doubt, no matter what, I knew that I had been in these other lives, right. and I had third-party verification, all the, all the goods. Wow. And so when I got into this uh, journey with these indigenous elders, um, an horrible looking horse uh, invited me to come with his family and do this prayer run for world peace across the country. And I would run with his daughter, Gracie, from the East Coast, from New York, to the Black Hills of South Dakota. And we had my friend Allison Fast organizing the West Coast run from California to the Black Hills. We had a group of riders and runners from Canada and a group of runners from Mexico. Oh. And we all so from four corners, and yes. you met at the Black Hills. The 10th annual World Peace Prayer Day ceremonies. Wow. And we did this with all these indigenous youth and uh -huh. kids from all over the place. And in that process, I got to both see the strength and the power of the indigenous tradition and the way and the code of that and the honor of that. And in the youth, you could feel the frustration because right. it, it wasn't evolving, it wasn't growing with them. Right. And many of them, you know, had hip hop culture and right. gangster culture in their blood, you know, and, and 
was difficult for these two sides to meet. And for me, I experienced the difficulty of a lot of my spirituality, mm -hmm. the way that I have been cultivating my spirituality. Besides the energy stuff, which they were into, right. like they would not meet me in the place of past life stuff. Right. They would not meet me in the place of some of the uh, extraterrestrial experiences that right. I had. Even though they'd say, our traditions came from Star Nation. Right. That white buffalo calf woman was a Star Nation ambassador who gave us our ceremonies. Um, there's still a huge amount of resistance and desire to keep to their tradition and um. their way of doing things. But over the, over the years, you know, that really inspired me to get into my tradition, my right. ancestry, and look back along the lines of Irish, Celtic, all the way back until I began to find my Your real own. tradition, right. the Tuatha De Danann tradition. And that which was kept in the two up until like the, around the days of Avalon when Christianity came in yes. really strong and a lot. So of tell me now about life. your tradition. What what is it? What is the yeah. Celtic tradition? Sword and chalice, staff and stone. Staff and stone, Avalon. And all the circles. And the, the mists colors. of Avalon. For us, the medicine wheel is not just the directions. Mm -hmm. It is a cycle of changes in right. which. We represent the different elements of change with different tools. Mm -hmm. So the chalice is the cup that represents, as the sun rises, it fills your cup, and it, it is the chalice that you share in the spring with others to commune and to build a relationship. Mm -hmm. In the summer, it's the staff, it's the tree, the stave, the full-grown essence of who we are coming into blooming. In the fall, it's the diamond or the pentacle, it's the harvest of the seed. It's receiving the wealth from the earth and also giving back to the earth that which we do not need anymore mm -hmm. and giving to each other the gifts of our harvest. Right. And then finally in the winter, the sword, the refinement, the hardening and the focusing of the steel, the self coming into full alignment inside of the self mm -hmm. to know our true self so that we can then come out in relationship again in the right. spring. Yeah. I mean, that's a little fragment, but there's yeah, it's, endless stories of... And um, your learnings, are they, are they a self-discovery? Or do you, have, do you have teachers or a teacher who has really influenced? Mm. I have many teachers, mm. um, but most of what I have learned, I remembered. Right. Because I yeah. learned how to create an astral library for myself a long time ago. And through the creation of this library, uh, in each lifetime, when I get the right keys, I can receive the library again. Yeah. Um, and I also, in my journey, you know, met and encountered many amazing beings um, and read many amazing books. The work of Barbara Ann Brennan was deeply informative to me as a NASA astrophysicist who had turned her life towards studying energy and the energy bodies and mm -hmm. documenting energy bodies and energetic healing. Um, her, her books, Light Emerging and Hands of yes. Light, highly recommended. Um, Druvalo Relchizedek, you know, is a nice confirmer in some fronts, um, The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life. Manly P. Hall's work on, you know, all of these uh, sort of secret traditions right. over the ages. Um, inside of those pages, I found many things that I'd had visions of. Right, so it was just like a reconfirmation, yeah, kind of. Confirmations. Yeah, when you were feeling it, you were kind of attracting the right information to kind of go maybe deeper into it or just reconfirm. That's right. And then, of course, with body work, um, my Tai Chi teacher, right. um, Brent Neely, who his teacher was Chen Men Ching, you know, oh. helped me to, or his teacher was Benjamin Lo, who was a student of Chen Men Ching. Uh -huh. And that, having that kind of really full anchor in, in how to soften and to feel the body and work with energy was uh -huh. really helpful as a late teenager. Right. And um, so now tell me, with all of this knowledge and great wisdom that you have within you, and the access to this awesome astral library, can I get a loan from that Astro Library any time? Sure. <laughs> sure, thank yeah. you. I mean, it, the, <laughs> the library, the great library belongs to all of us. Yeah. And you could say I have sections, I've put a lot of bookmarks in. Yes, so just give me a few codes to that, that's all. Okay. Okay, so tell me what is, what are you doing now? What is your work? What are you working on now with all of the, these amazing keys that you have? Uh, I'm working on a few different things. Yes. <laughs> um, so on the front of my research and development, I've 
been working on a course for the Resonance Academy of Unified Physics, which okay. is an academy online that I helped to build and create. Mm -hmm. It's academy.resonance.is.is. And um, the delegate program there is a deep dive into our relationship with the universe, uh, the journey of physics up till now, how we can fix all the parts that got branched off that you don't quite fit together. Um, and my work in this next cycle is creating a course called Quantum Geometry. And what I get into is actually the specific sacred mm -hmm. geometries wow. which actually modulate the structure of space-time itself, creating the forces that we call gravity and mass and electromagnetism, yeah. um, strong force, weak force, all of these emerge from the underlying structure of the fabric of space. Uh, they're, not, they're not just like, you know, oh, this They're force just, and that yeah, force. yeah. It's actually the dynamics of the ether, of the energy itself right. in space time that's generating all of this. So, so, since we're sitting in one of Asia's largest pyramids, yes. why don't you tell me what you feel about pyramids? What is your take on pyramids? Well, pyramids uh, for ages have been used as energetic gathering systems and dissemination systems. Um, if we look at the structure of the pyramid itself, designed mm -hmm. to align uh, to the magnetic field of the planet, mm -hmm. and you look at research like the Russians have done mm -hmm. on electromagnetic fields in pyramidal structures, mm -hmm. you can see that they, they actually connect the magnetic field lines on the planet and focalize that electromagnetic energy into the inside mm -hmm. of the pyramid and also focus it up on the top. Right. And then also whatever happens whenever there's a large buildup of electromagnetic fields inside of a structure that's a pyramid, it's going to run that energy back out and uh -huh. exchange in the ley line. Right. Um, because obviously the energy is not running one direction. Right, it's two right, directions. right. So you can think of it as like uh, processing chips. Okay, so it, you, you mean like it just like attracts the energy and then kind of... Well, the energy is moving through the earth already. Right. But what it's doing is focalizing the right. movement of that energy and into you know, one point. Exactly, it's yeah. carrying it to the point, uh -huh. and and that central structure uh -huh. inside of the pyramid is where that electromagnetic field is right. most strongly anchored to the Earth's electromagnetic field. So there's a buildup internal. So when we as human beings are within a pyramid, mm -hmm. and especially going through some kind of deep processes, mm -hmm. how do you think it affects us? Well, I'd say that it could affect you positively or negatively depending on your disposition. Right. Um, but of course, it's an amplification. So, right. you know, the way that this space, for example, is held is very uh, focused and aligned to a level of respect where you're going to take your shoes off, you're going to honor the entry, you're going to come inside, you know, it's a beautiful entry. And when you enter, there's sort of a sense of, I'm entering a sacred space, I'm entering a temple. Yeah. And this is important because this tempers people's desire to just, you know, let their stuff out like crazy. <laughs> and so they come in and they're, they're a little centered. more focused, right. a little more centered. Um, but of course, being in there might stir up some stuff for them. Right, of course. And this is, this is part of the journey, of course, is facing the shadows that come up and having an opportunity to see them so that we can... Work show. through them, yeah. right. Uh, you just did something with pyramids yourself at, in the desert. Well, I did. Tell me about that. Yeah. I loved, you showed, you showed me some pictures <laughs> and they're fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of, uh, again, a lot of interesting synchronicities came yeah. together. Um, a friend of mine who actually lived on that land mm -hmm. where those indigenous elders had that fire ceremony okay. years after that, he designed a pyramid structure uh, built very much like a geodesic dome, but it's a two-layered two surface mm -hmm. um, with steel bars. Right. And uh, there's a camp that basically purchased this pyramid from him, that his mm -hmm. first big design. And so this camp was called Playa Alchemist, and it's a camp at Burning Man, which is a huge 70,000-person festival, so to speak, human <laughs> experience, experiment. Um, out in the middle of the desert in northern mm -hmm. Nevada, and um, and so we, I arrived to Playa Alchemist several days early because um, I had an early arrival pass, and I was helping craft a whole initiation experience that would happen in this pyramid, and you know I was like, well, what else am I going to do? I'm going to build this pyramid. And, and so, what was the experience like? It was amazing. I mean. 
of course, being, you know, hanging and swinging off of these little poles with like a little thing and you're way up above the <laughs> ground and you're trying to fasten, you know, a bolt. And you guys did that in four days, right? Yeah, four or five days. Yeah. Uh, you built a large pyramid in the space of four days. Almost as big as this one. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's an achievement. How many people were working on it? Um, there was about 15 of us that were pretty solid and mm. it would fluctuate between okay, 5 right. and 15. Right. And, right. you know, we would be taking rounds and, and me and a few others really just like focused to get it done. Yeah. Um, and I got to screw on the capstone, which was oh. absolutely amazing. Being up there and I'm like just all like, the top <laughs> hanging on this thing and I'm like bolting it in and this one, you know, you couldn't just screw it in. I had to like stick the bolt through while I'm hanging on and it was... Uh, it was quite an experience. Yeah, and the um, fact that you're working wow, on like wow. sacred uh, geometry. Yes. And now you're building a pyramid. Yes. Which you didn't uh, really plan to. I mean, to kind of like anchor the cap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Send wow. The prayer through, and um, we had some absolutely amazing experiences in there. Great speakers and workshops, mm -hmm. and, and a full initiation experience cultivated by Lucent Dossier. Okay. And um, they're like Cirque du Soleil. Oh, okay, performers. okay. So aerialists and uh, fire in the air and a giant merkaba spinning with dancers coming off of it. it wow. Was fabulous. That um, must have been fabulous. It was amazing, yes. And so, it and, and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, and that which brings me, well, as an offshoot to Burning Man because it's become such a um, famous festival around the world. Uh, Unfortunately or fortunately, but um, you know, just as an offshoot of that, because there's so many of the young, younger generations that are just longing to go to Burning Man or are very attracted by Burning Man. What do you think, what is the future of the awakening of the coming generations, you know, especially the teenagers and the young youth that are out there, since your awakening began as a teenager as well, you know? Yeah. What do you see? What are you seeing? Well, I see, I see that the youth now, um, you know, they've just had a lot more exposure yeah. to information than most of us did when we were young. And I mean, I had the internet at some point growing up, but at, for them, it's like it's on their phone, they've got everything, they can look at anything they want. And so they get highly intensively exposed to media of different levels. And it's easy for them to appreciate and respect very high quality media and materials and designs. And when something's like bad design, you know, 80s style website, whatever, they just they toss it aside right. immediately. Yeah. And and so I started realizing the word is is sexy. And it's actually that they they crave to see and experience things that are sexy and beautiful and, and well curated and well cultivated. And so I realized that, you know, in order to serve this generation, a lot of us uh, in on the spiritual path, you know, yeah. we gotta get our stuff together. We gotta hire good designers, we gotta show <laughs> up, or we gotta be good designers, and we have to start really thinking about how to craft our information in ways that are fun, exciting, yes. uh, you know, tactile, applicable, that you can touch, you can feel, you and you can, can experience experience with your body, right? Because just hearing, yeah. So oh, I, I mean, you know, I I think that what I feel also, and what you're trying to say is this: youth today want the experience; they want to feel the transformation. Yeah. And if you can offer it to them, then they can actually transform. I've, I, I mean, I've seen that, you know, yeah. if, you, if they can feel that experience, they can transform. Yeah. You know? I've been prototyping, uh, I have an academy that I've had open for a few years, it's called the Guardian Alliance, and I've been prototyping a sort of gamified, you earn badges, you take different courses, you right. have different experiences, a lot of videos to watch, to do the practices, um, and, and I've been building it for adults. But in a way, I've kind of just been prototyping the whole thing so right. that eventually I can actually build the full castle Hogwarts with the secret X-Men training center. <laughs> you know, advanced, super advanced technology and you know, ancient, ancient knowledge. castles and chivalry yes. and understanding and masculine, feminine, and, and oh, of course, openness to all things. Right, yes. right. And do you see that coming together in, in the world to come? I do, yes. Absolutely. Do you think it's exciting or is it something that we have to be scared of? I mean, I'm completely bored. <laughs> All the time. All the time? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, of course it's exciting. Yes. Yeah. Um, 
I'm very excited to see this world we're unfolding into. Right. Um, and a lot of my other work, which I didn't really get into, yes. has to do with technology. And I deeply believe that we're in a juncture where we are going from being sort of an isolated, perceiving ourselves to be separate human species in a bunch of nation states to a global, synchronized, open culture with many, many different traditions all colliding and interfacing uh, for the first time in full public format on this planet with other star nations from other worlds. Wow. And that the vision that Gene Roddenberry had in Star Trek of us turning on warp drive and yeah. meeting the Vulcans is not as far away as we think. Um, and there are very, very active technological developments uh -huh. that are moving that boat forward very quickly. So, you know, work with me here and envision getting on a starship in this lifetime and going and exploring the galaxy, because that's... I I'm, I'm, I was just going to say, even before you said that, I was going to say, Adam, I hope I meet you on a starship really soon, and we go meet the Vulcans and maybe travel back to the Celtics. Yeah, well, they'll be the Syrians probably instead. <laughs> maybe. But I have a vision that we will be on a starship together, and we will be celebrating with great dance party music as other starships dock with our ship from other worlds while we're broadcasting to the pyramids all over the planet. Ah, uh, that's fantastic. Which reminds me, before we sign off, tell me a little bit about your music. You're very passionate about that. That's one thing I forgot about, but yeah. it's the most important aspect. You know, I love music mm -hmm. deeply. Um, and I grew up learning some piano and learning drums. Um, and, you know, none of those mediums really ever totally resonated for me. And then when I was um, about 17, uh, my friend bought turntables and a bunch of vinyl, and I'd been going and uh, watching DJs for a long time, mm -hmm. dancing at big dance parties since yes. I was about 15 when I woke up also. <laughs> and, um, and I started falling in love with this idea that I could take music that somebody else had created and I could remix it, I could match the beat, and I could play with the beats and the sound and the experience. Yeah. Um, and that work for me evolved over time to not just being like, ooh, this is fun, you mm -hmm. know, I'm just making a dance party, but actually cultivating a sound experience that moves people emotionally, that takes you not just to like, yeah, hey, you know, hey let's have fun, in, yeah. In the house all the time, mm -hmm. but, but actually like, oh, what's happening now and where am I going now and oh what's these feelings coming up for me and then oh wow this is what it feels like to let that go mm -hmm. and move people through a transformational experience. So I look forward to being on a starship with you. Thank you, you too. Partying and <laughs> feeling and just surrendering to your music That's very so soon. Beautiful. Yes it does. Thank you so much. Thank you. So yeah, much, Adam. Thank, you. Thank you. It's just been fascinating.